Hi, I'm Corey Skimming, Product Marketing Manager with VMware Tanzu. And today I'm joined by Nele Ullman from our Spring One sponsor, Kamunda. Welcome, Nele. Hi, thanks for having me. Awesome, super happy to have you here. Um, to start off, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about Kamunda. Yeah, as you said before, my name is Nele and I work as, the, uh, as a developer advocate for Kamunda. Kamunda is an open source um, technology. So as a developer advocate, I help the Kamunda community um, to understand and use Kamunda's product and also to give feedback from the community back to our product team. Um, and I really enjoy working with the open source community. Awesome. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about what Kamunda does specifically? Yeah, so um, Kamunda can mean a lot of different things for different people because it involves a lot of different stakeholders. But if we talk to the Spring Java community, it is simply a library that you can add to your um, projects. Maybe that doesn't sound that interesting now, but this library is really great. It helps you to orchestrate um, services and maintain your state in an application or even within a whole architecture. And you can see that here on this slide, um, you can add, for example, Kamunda into one Spring Boot application and can use it just in that single application for holding your state and orchestrate your services in that, um, in that application. And by doing so, you also get additional features that will help you to reduce um, boilerplate code. And Kamunda helps you to define retries, timeout, versioning, and error handling. And Kamunda does that with a graphical notation that is executable that is based on an open standard called BPMN. And that is just there for one single application if you want to embed it, but it's even greater because you can also use it for a whole architecture of different services. So if we now bring service one and service three also into the picture, you can use Kamunda for microservice orchestration. So you have that one component, the one service that maintains and holds states for you. And you can imagine you have other Spring Boot applications in a microservice architecture, but maybe mm -hmm. at one point you exchange it with a Node.js component because often microservice architectures are polyglot. So Kamunda also, uh, also works in a polyglot system. And um, yeah, that's basically the, or that's Kamunda in a nutshell, I would say. Awesome. So if you had to look at all of these amazing features, what would you really say is the core superpower of, of Kamunda? I would say the superpower of Kamunda is that it is a source of truth when it comes to state. We all know that um, for data, the database is the truth of data. And if you talk about state, Kamunda really is the truth of source for you. And um, yeah, you see all the other features here that are also um, really nice to have, like, for example, the centralized error handling. And what I also really like about it is the visibility of the end-to-end -end process within your microservice architecture, for example. When you think of a microservice architecture, what we really don't want to have are distributed transactions. So what we need are local transactions in every service. So we, we use often Zaga patterns. And if we use a Zaga pattern, if the Zaga is really complex, it is nice to have it somehow visually so that we know what has happened before and what will happen afterwards. So we have an understanding of the end-to-end -end process in our microservice architecture. And you can imagine Kamunda here as a component like Kafka that acts in a non-transactional behavior. And Kamunda also can help you when you imagine this complex Zagas, for example, to roll back uh, different steps. And if one step in the Zaga breaks, you need to make sure that you have something to roll back the other steps that happened before. And mm -hmm. here Kamunda can be a really great help. Well, as someone who appreciates both libraries and processes, <laughs> that sounds really awesome. So it sounds like Kamunda does a lot of 
uh, great things for developers and helping teams to visualize their processes specifically, which, you know, I'm geeking out a little bit over. What would be really cool now is to hear some of the interesting use cases of how Kamuna is being used, you know, out in the, the, the wider world and, and beyond. Yeah, I'm happy to answer this. And it's a great question because processes are everywhere and <laughs> that makes it also great to work at Kamunda because um, there are so many different use cases, but you can break them down. And one really common use case is to combine the service orchestration with human workflow tasks. So you have a process that incorporates human interaction, user interaction, and the service orchestration. Um, and then you normally have a high throughput where you um, have a lot of process instances starting. Um, and as an example, to make it more visible, um, we have a customer that is a um, clothes retailer, a German clothes retailer called Zalando, and they use um, Kamunda for the ordering process. So if you order something online, um, you press the um, order button and then Kamunda is triggered and helps to get your order to your door. And yeah, that is one, uh, one type of use case. And another one is when we don't have the user involved anymore. So you can imagine a lot of processes are happening completely in automation. And um, a company that is doing that, where you would first not think they do it, is 24-hour fitness. Because when I think about 24-hour fitness, I think of people going to the gym. But 24-hour fitness uses the Kamunda engine for high throughput um, processes that happen completely automatically. So whenever a user in a gym is doing an interaction or a transaction, Kamunda is started in the, in the background to um, process information. Yeah, it certainly processes a lot of places that you uh, would never recognize or, or think of, even though you know they're there. <laughs> Yeah, and even like, I mean, now I talked about two companies that are more or less new companies. So they have the great situation. They can start with their infrastructure from scratch. So they decide for modern technology and use modern components and maybe use already microservice orchestration, but not everyone is there yet. So we also have the third group of users that still have the old system they have to deal with. So they have this monolith component and they really want to break it down or break it up into smaller pieces. And Kamunda can be used here as well well to add flexibility to older systems and uh, step by step starts replacing them. Um, I think good examples here are German insurance and bank companies. <laughs> so when you ever have the chance to see their systems, uh, well, you know what I mean with an old monolith. Not all of them, <laughs> but some. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's much the same in North America. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it makes sense, right? If you cannot start with a new infra or if with a new architecture, you have something that is built from the past, and yet then you need to find ways to make it better and to to mm -hmm. yeah bring it to the standard that we have now. And the last use case I like to talk about because um, I like it a lot. It's not even on Earth. It's a use case where Kamunda is used in the most recent uh, Mars rover. And the Mars rover uses Kamunda to process pictures. And this is a really great use case. I can't. So cool. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit sad. I can't show you the process model that NASA is using. But I have a funny one like about the use case, how a rover lands on Mars. And I like to show that to give you um, an idea how BPMN as a graphical notation looks like and how the process is really easy to understand. So we can see here that we um, send a probe to Mars as a start event and we have different end events. And um, you can also see this arrow sign, this, um, yeah, this, uh, flash here where we see something happen that should not happen and that's kind or that is the type of error handling I was talking about so here we can see the end event that is crashed and then we have here an event sub process where crashed is handled we also see here the two types of tasks so we have um, the user task here when I talked about the human interactions that is a place um, where the user would do something in the process and the service task represents all the service interactions that we have within the process. 
and there's way more uh, to BPMN and uh, I really love to talk about BPMN so if you are also or if you want to know more you can definitely come to our booth and uh, I give you a trip around or through that model. So cool. Uh, it's not often you get a, a use case that is quite literally in space. Can you tell us a little bit about how the Spring community can get started using Kamunda today? Yeah, Kamunda builds up on open standards. So it's Itself, it is an open source Java um, technology and uses the open standard BPMN. Having those two components or having this, it is really simple. You can add Kamunda as a dependency to your existing Spring Boot project. And by having that then, you can add all the things you like and love about Spring to that project as well. For example, it's very easy to integrate Spring security with a Kamunda project. And that's, for example, something we see really often happening. So by just having the library, you just add it and use it. Awesome. All right, well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. 